Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa dhurriyatihi tasliman kathira amma ba'd. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gathered all of us here for one reason. We are one ummah. As you know, recently we have an incident with one of our brother, Faridun, 15 years old. He passed away because of that shooting. Most of you know. We called the Sheikh, our brother, our teacher, Ustaz, Imam, Wesley Lebron, Abu Sumayya, Hafizahullah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect him. He will give us some reminder, guidelines, and story from his life, how he went to that gangs and how he did came out from that gangsters. And he will give us some examples, nasiha from Quran and Sunnah, for you, for all of us to understand how dangerous is this. How are you going to ruin your life if you have be in that path? So, not to make it too long, our Shaykh is here, inshallah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our time, after his lectures, we could ask a question from him, and we'll do the Q&A session, inshallah. So, Shaykhana, bismillah. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tamassaka bi sunnatihi ila yawmiddin amma ba'd fa inna astaqal hadithi kalamullah wa khayrul hadi hadiyu muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharral umuri muhdathatuha wa kulla muhdathatin bid'atin wa kulla bid'atin dalala wa kulla dalalatin fin nari thumma amma ba'd I commence in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. I send salutations of prayers and peace upon the finality of prophets and messengers. Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his family, his companions, and all who follow him in righteousness until the day of judgment. Indeed, beloved brothers and sisters, the best speech is the book of Allah jalla wa ala, the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down the Qur'an as huda, as guidance, as nur, as light, as rahmah, as mercy, as shifa, as a healing for what lies within the hearts and souls of human beings. And the best of that guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of affairs are newly invented matters in terms of creed, as every newly invented matter is something that leads humanity astray. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, excuse me, on this blessed night to protect us from ever going astray and to always allow us to be upon Sirat al Mustaqim. Beloved brothers and sisters, it hurts the soul. <clears throat> the heart and the mind that we have to come to the Muslim community to talk about these types of topics, to talk about from the streets to the graves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has blessed us immensely. He has given us so much in this life, bounties as He said, that if you were to try to count the bounties of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, la tuhsuha. You'll never be able to enumerate and count those bounties. And unfortunately, what happens in gatherings like these, with topics like these, in many instances, the people who need to listen and to hear them, for the most part, at times, are not the ones who are in the room. But as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he once said to his companions to let those who are present convey to those who are not. 
And perhaps maybe those who are not will understand better than those who are present insha'Allah ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the greatest blessings that he has given you is Islam. And it's a shame to see our Muslim youth doing away with the most precious of gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have given you. When we talk about from the streets to the graves, I can tell you that many people in the streets are in need of what you have. They want what you have. They seek what you have. The tatama inna, the peace, the tranquility, the solace, guidance in their life. Because many instances they come from nothing. They've suffered and lived a life that has put them through hell on this earth. And that many times they are there because they feel they have no other choice. But I can tell you that that is not the case for our brothers and sisters in Islam. You have a choice. Allah wa ta'ala has given every single one of us a choice. Allah says in the Quran, الَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا دِينَهُمْ لَهْوًا وَلَعِبًا وَغَرَّتْهُمْ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فَالْيَوْمَ نَنْسَاهُمْ كَمَا نَسُوا لِقَاءَ يَوْمِهِمْ هَذَا وَمَا كَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يَجْحَدُونَ He says, those who took their Islam, their faith, as amusement and play, and they were deluded regarding their worldly life, that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is going to say to them, Yawmul Qiyamah, today we are going to ignore you or forget you, just as you ignored and forgot this day of yours, rejecting our revelations. Beloved brothers and sisters, subhanallah, the deen of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is not something that you want to play with. Some people, unfortunately, especially our shabab, our youth, they think, I got time. I'm going to live a long life, insha'Allah ta'ala. I'm only 15, 16, 18, 20. But you see that that's not true with our young brother who just passed away the other day. And subhanallah, Allah knows best what happened. I don't know what happened. But there are two angles. One angle is that perhaps our young brothers at times, because of where you're being raised, you allow the environment to create something that should not be created. Yes. We live in a tough place. Brooklyn is not easy. You may go to a school where, subhanAllah, people may say things, people may do things, people may try things. And that requires a person to have a certain type of personality to be able to survive that type of stuff. But it either leads you one or two ways. It leads you down the same path and road that those same individuals are walking down, which is a road of misguidance, a road of deviance, a road of being lost, a road of thinking that I can solve anything with my hands. And I can tell you, I don't care if you know jujitsu, kung fu, wrestling, whatever you think that you may know. The streets has a whole different culture at hand. You may be a tough guy when it comes to fighting one-on-one -on -one with another person, but when someone pulls out the gun, there's no jujitsu, there's no kung fu, there's no wrestling in the world that is going to save your life. 
Don't think that you're going to watch those Instagram videos of mashallah, a person puts a gun here and alhamdulillah, you're going to get it out of their hands. The trigger finger is much faster. Trust me. Don't be fooled. And if you're walking down that path, more than likely, the grave is the only thing that is awaiting you. And not only the grave, but what comes after that. Because the person that dies on that disobedience of thinking that subhana rabbil azim, we can harm other individuals. Remember that Allah Jalla wa ala in the Quran, He said, whoever takes a life, He didn't say how the life was taken. Whoever takes a life unjustly without a cause, it's like if you've killed all of humanity. Is that a sin that you're willing to bear? To me, Allah Jalla wa ala, and it's like if you killed all of humanity. Even our beloved brothers who subhana rabbil azim say, well, okay, maybe the gun is not involved. There's always a chance that someone is going to get hurt or something can happen. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was the best of examples for us. And there's no way that we can ever say that the Prophet sallallahu would behave in this manner. The second road for the one who hasn't chosen the street life because some choose the street life and the street life it either ends in jail, dead, or Allah by His grace and mercy He allows you to wake up and see and then you turn your life around like some of us who came off the streets. But that was only by the mercy and grace of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala because I can tell you if it weren't for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I would not be standing in front of you today. The second road is a road where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says, فَلْيَنْذُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالْ He says, let each and every single one of you look to who he takes as his friend. فَالرَّجُلُ عَلَى دِينِ خَلِيلِ Because a person is on the way of his friend. What does that mean? That means as I hang out with Abdullah or Khalid or Latif or whoever it is, my grandmother used to tell us when we were young, we have a statement in my culture, and it may be the same with other cultures. Tell me who you walk with, and I'll tell you who you are. Tell me who you walk with, and I'll tell you who you are. Meaning, what is Khalid and Latif and all Ibrahim involved in? Because if Khalid and Latif and Ibrahim are involved in that life of being on the streets, the tough guy, the gangster, then you know what? You will more than likely end up in the same place that Khalid and Latif and Ibrahim will end up. All it takes is for you to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, like our beloved brother, and for someone else, who's really serious about those streets, to pull out that gun and shoot into the crowd because he saw the one that he wanted. And oftentimes, the one that he wanted is not the one that gets hit. And many times, is the one who's innocent. is the one who didn't know any better. The one who really didn't want to be a part but didn't know how to separate himself. Peer pressure can be tough at a young age. But Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has given you Islam to say, I don't want this life. And I can tell you, subhanAllah, during Ramadan, 
We were in the masjid, Laylatul Qadr, the night, the 27th. Finished making dua, kunut, and I'm walking out of the building, and I hear one of the sisters say, Shaykh, he has a knife. And I see one of the young men running out of the building. So I run behind him. Get to the corner, and I see these young men, they're just punching each other in the face, hitting each other, fighting. I'm grabbing them, getting them off. I'm thinking the non-Muslims must have showed up. They're trying to do something with the Muslims. But how wrong I was. It was actually the Muslims beating up on the Muslims. Fighting over Allah knows best what. Some say a girl. Some say a basketball game. Some say other than that. And all of it is ridiculous. Fight over a girl. We know you're supposed to get married. Girlfriend's not permissible in Islam. Lose your life over someone who means nothing. Ridiculous. Over a basketball game. Doesn't make sense. But not only that. It gets worse. That when we find the parent and we inform the parent of what was happening, that the young Muslims are fighting against other young Muslims. And I'm telling you, the kid, his face is out here, he's bleeding ear out here. That the father also makes a statement that is troubling. Where he says, if anyone harms my kid, I'll kill him. And I look and I say, well, where do you think the kid got it from? We have to be extremely careful, subhana rabbil azim. In the messages we convey as well as parents to our children, I understand it hurts to see your child hurt. But in many instances, our children sometimes aren't innocent. And sometimes, maybe it was my child who was the problem. And I need to find out the complete story. And it doesn't make a difference sometimes if you're righteous, if you're not righteous. Wallahi. I tell my wife often, we have the conversation often that if you're reading the Qur'an, one son of Adam killed the other. The son of Nuh ran up the mountain. The sons of Yaqub, they threw their brother inside of the well. If you look at it through history, we've had this type of behavior, subhana rabbil azim. But those are lessons that Allah Jalla wa Ala has placed in the Qur'an. So that we can ponder, we can reflect, we can contemplate. And so that we can learn from them, subhanAllah. These actions are actions of shaitan. You're either with hizb shaitan or you with Hezbollah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to talk about gangs and parties, Allah uses the word in the Qur'an. Hizb, the party, the gang of Allah, they're the successful ones. The party, the gang of shaitan, they're the ones who are going to be defeated. And one of the worst things that we can do, wallahi, is retaliate. I know it hurts that the young brother he was killed, and people are probably upset. Some of the shabab, they think that, mashallah, I'm going to do something about it. But we have to understand that world that is out there. Wallahi, some of our young brothers, maybe you were raised here, maybe you just came. I'm 46 years old. I can tell you that you're playing with fire. 
if you have, if this turns into an Uzbeki, African-American war, there's going to be problems. There will be a lot of life lost. Because if the African-Americans, I don't know who's involved on the African-American side in terms of the gangs, but if you're talking about Crips and Bloods and some of these gangs that have been here a very, very long time, they're well armed with all types of weapons. They don't care about life whatsoever. Their life means nothing to them. That it is not the thing that you want to go ahead and get yourself involved in. Because in retaliation, it only breeds forth more retaliation. It's only going to say to the other side, go ahead and not retaliate back. And then I wouldn't doubt that even that retaliation reaches the front door of the masjid. Because some of these people don't care. For them, it's survival at any cost. These gangs have been around 40, 50 years, well-established, connected, not only in New York, they're connected nationally. So we really have to think, ya shabab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again, he's given you Islam. Don't take it as a game, insha'Allah ta'ala. Don't think that I got time. Because the reality is that we may not have time. The only time you have is today, tomorrow is not promised to anybody. And when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what are you going to do when you're in the grave? And Allah asks you, what did you believe in? Who was your Lord? Who was your prophet? Who was, mashallah, what was your religion? Just because you know it, you've memorized it, it doesn't mean you're going to be able to say, Allah, Islam, Muhammad. Because knowing it in the mind has to be, mashallah, lived in the heart and upon the limbs for the believers on that great day in that great moment when you're going to be tested and sat up in your grave by the malaika, the angels and ask those questions, that if that Iman is the only thing that is going to allow you to say, Allah, Muhammad, Islam. If the deen was la'id, if the deen was play and amusement, and you didn't take it seriously, you'll be from those that say, uh, uh, I just used to say what the people used to say. And punishment in Jahannam is forever. Punishment in Jahannam, as the Prophet ﷺ stated, the lightest of punishments in the hellfire is a man who will wear sandals of fire that will make his brain boil. Just go home and put your hand over the fire and see if you can handle it. So beloved brothers and sisters, we need to wake up. The youth, you need to wake up. You need to really think about what you're doing, how you're doing it, where you're doing it. And remember that you don't have to become a product of the place in which you live. You, as a Muslim, should be changing the place where you live. That when you step your feet in that place, it turns to gold. Because we have the deen of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, we have morals, we have manners, we have akhlaq. And that when people see us, they say, subhanallah, I want to be like Abdullah. Because I can guarantee that when you look at most of those kids in your high schools, they come from broken homes. 
no mother sometimes, no father, parents on drugs, parents in jail. And this is breeds angry children and children who result to the streets. But what is your excuse? Most of you have both of your parents. Parents who are hardworking. Parents who are not on drugs. Parents who are not in jail. Parents who have given you, mashallah, a good roof over your head. Parents who take care of you and give you clothing and give you the things that you want and the things that you need. What is your excuse to have to want to be like that person in the street that has nothing, who suffered most of their life and has become a product of their society based on the negativity that they've faced? That's not your case. Rather, you should be illuminating lights for those individuals. They should see you and want to be like you. We've mentioned it twice too often, subhanAllah, that people don't realize, especially our shabab, that you have influence. That Islam is also cool. You see, everybody wants to wear a beard now, right? Muslims have been wearing beard for 1400 years. And all of a sudden, it's in style. People now want to wear their pants high waters. Muslims have been wearing high water pants above their ankles for a long time. If you affect the society, and you can, you can change how that society functions. You don't believe me? Drive to Philadelphia. Downtown Philadelphia. You're going to see non-Muslims with kufis, non-Muslims with hijabs, non-Muslims saying, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh, because the Muslims have affected that city, that even the non-Muslims want to look like the Muslims and act like the Muslims, speak like the Muslims, and you get confused sometimes, you don't know who's Muslim, who's not. That's our role here on the earth, wallahi. And I can tell you, within that first road of being a gangster, that many don't realize how much of a gangster you are not until you end up in Rikers Island. In Rikers Island, that is survival of the fittest. It is the place where animals are lions and tigers. And most people don't survive. Many men end up someone's girlfriend for the next 10 years, 15 years of your life. And at that point, there's no turning around. And at that point, it's too late. People don't realize until they're sitting in front of the judge and the judge says, you know what? 15 years, life. Go on Instagram and see the tough guys. That when the judge tells them life, they begin to cry. <sighs> because that toughness went away. They understand where they're being sent to now. They're being sent to the zoo with the ca in the cage with the animals who want your breakfast, want your lunch, want your dinner, want your shoes, want your shoelaces. They even want your baby powder. That's how petty it gets inside of the jail. I've seen grown men not want to be in that place. Wallahi. I remember when my cousin went to prison and he only went for six months. And my cousin is six foot four, almost 270 pounds, someone who has been fighting in the street all his life. And he said, cousin, in prison, I met my match. 
I met the guy who hit me so hard I thought my ribs went out the other side of my body over baby powder. I used to go visit him in the stress that you see in his face because you have to wake up and survive every day. That after his six months was out and I picked him up, wallahi, he ran for like four or five blocks just yelling, Thank you, God! Because not only were, did they have to survive, but they tell you when to eat, when to sleep, what to do, what not to do. Most of the people are not ready for that. And if you live in that life, wallahi, tallahi, wa billahi, those are the only two roads that going, are, you're going to meet. You got the saying, live by the sword, you die by the sword, right? That's the saying in the streets. Or you're going to end up in prison for the rest of your life, and there's nothing your mother, there's nothing your father, there's nothing that they can do for you. And maybe you didn't kill someone, maybe you didn't shoot someone, but you thought in retaliating back and maybe just beating someone up, you and a few of your friends together, that nothing was going to happen to you until they catch you on camera, until the cops have the film. There's cameras all over the place, brothers and sisters. All right? New York City is full of cameras. You're not gonna get away with it. And until you're standing in front of the judge and they give you threat with attempted murder, because when you're trying to harm an individual, three or four people, the judge sees it as if you're trying to kill them. Threat with attempted murder, you can go away for 10, 15, 25 years. It's nothing to play with. So use your head. Wallahi, even when you see these kids that are listening to rap music and listening to trap music, right? Because this is a problem as well. And I know many times parents don't even understand what's happening. They got something called trap music right now where these gangsters, they're talking about murdering people in songs. And these rap songs are leading from one person to kill another. It's becoming a huge thing here in America now. And sometimes our youth are listening to this type of stuff. And wallahi is just going to lead you down the wrong path. Allahu tabaraka wa ta'ala, he says the heart cannot contain two things. The heart cannot contain iman and the love of Allah and the love of the world and the streets. One is going to take over. You're going to love one more than the other. Just like you love either your mother or your father more than the other. You don't love them the same. It's impossible. Human beings don't love anything equally. And either Allah and his messenger in Islam, you're going to love that so much that it takes over your life. Or you're going to love the world until the point that you get lost. And only Allah knows best if there's any return. Because some don't make it back. Malik ibn Dinar, he says, when you propose to the dunya, meaning you offer the world or offer to marry the world, he says, the dunya will ask as the dowry, your deen. That dowry that the man is supposed to give to the woman, that wedding gift, that the world, what it wants is your faith, your religion, to you to lose everything. Remember shaitan, he says, Ya Allah, because you let me go astray, I'm going to sit on the path. I'm going to come to them from their left, from their right, from in front, from in back, from above. And what you're going to find, Ya Allah, is that most of them are not grateful. Most of them don't want Islam. Most of them don't believe in you, Ya Allah. Most of them don't want to be Muslim, Ya Allah. I'm going to prove it to you. And Allah says, 
and I'm going to fill hell with you and all of them together. So the real fight that you and I are in every day is a fight with shaitan, which is the hardest fight that you'll ever have in your life. Again, jujitsu is not going to help you. Wrestling is not going to help you. Kung Fu is not going to help you. Even the gun can't help you with shaitan. But what is going to help you is Islam, the Quran, the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and shaitan, he's been around since before Adam. Meaning, he knows you better than you know yourself. He knows what you like. He knows what you love. He knows what's going to convince you. He knows how to push you. And Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he tells us in the Quran that the only one that shaitan has power over is the one whom follows him. Because shaitan is powerless for the person of iman, the person of faith. So don't allow yourselves to walk down that path. If you are a real brother, فَالرَّجُلُ عَلَى دِينِ خَلِيلِي you be the one to change that relationship. You put your brother upon what you're upon. You grab him, you say, listen, man, we're not going to do that. That's the strong Muslim. That's the tough Muslim. We're going to be Muslims, people of Iman. Inshallah ta'ala will let the cops and everyone else handle it. Because many times they may think I'm a chump, I'm a punk, I'm a coward. If I don't do something about it, trick from shaitan. Because as soon as you engage, shaitan, he tells his men, you can let him go. We got him. But you be the one that helps to bring your brothers into a positive state, inshallah ta'ala. Be the hizbah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be the gang and the party of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Be the gang of iman, the light of iman, the light of Quran, the light that inshallah ta'ala the world needs in these times. Because I can tell you 25 years ago that was what I was looking for. Lost in darkness, looking to see where there was light so that I can grab that light and hold on to that light. And when I found the light, I grabbed it as if nothing else existed. Because I understood if I didn't hold on to it, only Allah knows best where I would have went. So hold on to your faith, ya shabab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it to you at birth. Don't take that for granted. Don't take belief for granted like many do. And then maybe years later you become a Muslim, a person of Iman. Understand what you have and the gift that you have. And understand that the world, as Allah says in the Quran, its beauty, its delight, all of that is mata'ul ghurur. All of it is deception. There's nothing there. So we'll end there, beloved brothers and sisters. We'll take some questions, inshallah ta'ala. We hope that our brothers were listening and that the ones who may need to hear it the most, that you take the message back to them. That you let them know that whatever happened the other day, don't take matters into your own hands. Don't become vigilantes. Don't create gangs to try to fight back. Allahu tabaraka wa ta'ala is just. In our deen, there's a thing called qadr. The pre-decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is nothing that no one could have done to change that situation. Allah wrote for that to happen. But either we're going to learn from it 
or we're going to fail in learning the lesson and it continues to happen. The choice is ours, wallahi. And how we move and what we do from here. And indeed, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is just and he'll never let that go unpaid for. Maybe the person doesn't pay for it in this life. But you can bet your bottom dollar on it that he will pay for it in the next. You trying to take it on yourself, why? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Samir al-Basir, al-Alim al-Khabir, al-Adil. Leave it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and protect your brothers from falling into these issues and from us having any more loss of life, inshaAllah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair. Are there any questions, inshaAllah ta'ala? The mic is going to go around. So, like, right, so, good questions. so uh, I work in high schools and I meet a lot of the youth, uh, especially the Muslim youth. So what advice would you have for someone who says, you know, I'm not involved in gangs, I don't get into fights, but, you know, maybe I listen to Kanye West or drill music, or maybe, maybe I vape sometimes, maybe I smoke weed. I'm not involved with the bad people. What advice would you have? All of those things are going to take you to bad people. The drill music, the vaping, the smoking weed, the rap music. It all takes you to a place of disobedience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I can tell you that it only gets worse. Many times, individuals, they say, well, I'm going to do it one time. I'm going to try it. Or you get peer pressured into trying it one time. That one time may be the final time and the only time that you need for your life to change forever. I had a good friend. He tried dope one time. And after that one time, I saw him in the streets begging, stealing, robbing a dope head on drugs out of the house and I couldn't believe it. Someone who subhanAllah was a good person but that one time destroyed his life completely, man. There was a girl one time she drank alcohol ended up raped by three men and when her father got the news he died of a heart attack. Can you imagine now what she feels like? I tried it once, I got raped, and then my father died because of it. The emotionality and the stress and the psychotherapy that now she probably has to go through because of it, all because one time, didn't know how to say no. Wallahi, stay away from that stuff. There's nothing that that stuff offers to you. Drill rap and rap music, if you look at it, what are they talking about? Every other word is a curse word. Every other word is a degradation of humanity, of women. Every other word is either talking about, you know, what they do in the streets, the drugs they sell, how does that bring Izza to your life? How, do, how does a Muslim run around singing these things, knowing what they mean? How do we partake in them? There's no way that we should be partaking in these things. So we advise our brothers and sisters, listen man, that stuff is going to ruin your life. But I gotta give you a hard pill to swallow. That sometimes, it doesn't matter how much you advise and how much you say. Sometimes you can say it until you're blue in the face and they won't listen anyway. And sometimes you just gotta let a person walk down the path and hope that they won't experience something that is going to be life-changing and altering and that they see and open their eyes beforehand. 
So you do your best giving them examples and trying to talk to them about, you know, what that stuff can do to your life. But at the end of the day, again, the son of Noah ran up the mountain, the sons of Yaqub threw Yusuf in the well, the son of Adam killed the other. And sometimes that stuff is out of our control, especially when our kids hit 18, 19, sometimes it's a tough decision. But just to end that advice, inshallah ta'ala, especially for our brother who's a teacher, inshallah ta'ala, you know, try to be that teacher who's approachable, that teacher who, mashallah, is willing to listen, um, that teacher who the kids kind of look up to. I know when I was young, we had a couple of those teachers in our high school, even though we did a lot of things we weren't supposed to, but we knew that when the going went tough and things got bad, that if we couldn't talk to our parents, these were people who we were able to talk to and be open with. Alhamdulillah, and that's needed, inshallah ta'ala. Because sometimes our youth don't know how to communicate with their parents. So they need a third party and someone like yourself, mashallah, you may have that ability to impact some type of change in their life through that trust that you can build with them, inshallah. Uh, with that, inshallah, I would like to end the session. Barakallahu feekum, shaykhna. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you, protect you, increase in knowledge and taqwa. And we have a, we would like to continue this question answer session after Salat al Isha. So inshallah we'll slowly go to Salah after Salat al Isha. Those brothers who have a question, if you have a question, you may raise your hand and ask at the masjid. So Shaykh will respond, inshallah. Allahu Akbar. Takbir. Takbir. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت ونستغفرك ونتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته